Hey guys, today we're winding back to 2006 to take a look at a legendary LEGO Batman set. One that some might consider the best of all time, the Batcave, the Penguin, and Mr. Freeze's Invasion from 2006. This came with seven minifigs, five of which were unique and exclusive to this set. 1,071 pieces make up this giant build, and it was available from June of 2006 through the end of December 2007 for $89.99. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $139 by today's money, which honestly kind of feels like what it would still cost today given the size, complexity, and the amount of pieces. So with that being said, let's dive in. I want to show you everything from the instructions to the box so you can get the full view of one of the best LEGO Batman sets of all time. So let's get it. All right, guys, so we've got to take a look at the box. I'm in the fortunate position where I actually own the box for this, and I bought it years ago knowing that someday I would get the set loose again because I had this as a kid, and I loved it as a kid. It was so much fun to play with, but it got lost to the bin, and of course, I didn't keep the box when I was a kid. Sure wish I did. So all these years later, I've had to piece it together. I bought the box on its own years ago, and it's really great. You've got digital renders of the minifigures on the top. Then as we flip it around back, you can see that we've got all kinds of play features and everything that we're going to break down as we go through this review telling you all the things that you can do here got all your bat accessories locked up there and even a comic if you want to pause and read the comic there as well as a giant advertisement for every lego batman set that you could get from the opening wave which just you know when i was a kid i would sit in the store and look at this and just dream about having them all and thanks to my awesome parents i actually did end up getting all of them except for the batwing for some reason i never had that one uh, back in the day, but I did get all the other ones, so I'm very, very grateful for that, and you'll never hear me complain. Now, something else cool about the box, it's pretty much impossible to, like, show on a video, so I just gotta tell you, is that the front is embossed, which means that, like, certain details are raised up and they're 3D, which is really, really cool, something LEGO certainly doesn't do today, and, of course, you can lift it up from the bottom so you could see how you would open it back in the day and it was really cool that you opened it up like that instead of like box tabs on the side this is something else lego never does today and there's the 89.99 price tag price tag on the bottom that's it 7783 the bat cave so let's start getting in even deeper now for historical purposes, I do want to show you a brief glimpse at both instruction books just to show you what it looked like back in 2006. We're not going to look at every single page, but the first book kind of ends with that midsection there of the actual build. Then, of course, we pick it up, but the real fun stuff is at the back on the very last pages where you can see we've got our piece count and all that, but... We've got these cool little computer schematics that show all the play features, which of course we're gonna look at in this video, but we've got some alternate builds here. I would love to try and go through and do these alternate builds, but I really don't wanna take apart the set that I just spent all this time building. <laughs> we've got our piece count, but my favorite thing in the instructions is a giant version of that poster or that promotional graphic we saw on the back of the box, which looks so great all blown up like this. Then of course we had some Lego Club advertisements, and when we flip to the last page, you can see a big old advertisement for the UCS Batmobile, which I've also reviewed here on the channel, and you should check out. So now, let's look at those minifigs. And of course, we gotta take a look at the minifigures up first. These look really, really amazing, and this Batman was not exclusive to this set, but it is basically 20 years old now, so it's pretty amazing to see how far the Batman design has come over the years. We got no back printing on the torso, as well as no leg printing, but the printing on the torso looked great. It's got that old Batman cowl, and if we lift that up, you can see what the original Bruce Wayne Batman head used to look like, where basically he's got that white headband on, so that when you put the Batman mask Mask on and makes his eyes look white. This is a classic Lego superheroes minifigure and definitely one of my favorites of all time. The Penguin is our other non-exclusive minifigure and he's a really great one but he did come in one other set so technically. Anyways it's really awesome with those short purple legs, the head looked awesome with the monocle, and of course the design of the torso was very very forward for the time with how much detail went into it but now Almost 20 years later, I really like how uh, it kind of represents a simpler time in LEGO superheroes, and particularly in LEGO Batman. 
Next up, we've got Mr. Freeze, and while he's not technically exclusive, Brickling says he is, and that's basically designed on, like, the way that the figure's made, but all of these pieces could be obtained in another LEGO Batman set, or you could just kind of easily put it together all together. So, it is a very, very cool figure. You can see he's got this clear dome over his head, and it's very, very inspired by Batman the Animated Series, as you can tell. He's got his giant ice gun here with a white tube there that looks great, and of course, we'll see a little bit later how that integrates into the story of the set. Since Mr. Freeze and the Riddler teamed up, they brought several of their henchmen with them. We actually get three of these Penguin builds. You could still build these today because they were built with relatively common parts, but it is pretty comical to see a Penguin holding a pistol. I mean, that's pretty awesome. For Mr. Freeze, we got a pretty cobbled together figure where the hat, head, torso, and legs all came in different sets, but of course, uniquely presented in this set, uh, together, it does make this figure exclusive of sorts, although you could put this together with just common pieces. In a similar boat, we have Bruce Wayne. Now, this torso, I believe, appeared in some other sets, and of course, they're just regular dark blue legs with a fairly common head from back in the day and black hair. So this figure was totally assemblable, assemblable? Yeah, that's a word. We'll go with it. <laughs> with other pieces back in the day, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure this torso came in other places. So it is a cool figure, technically exclusive, but eh, you could make it with other pieces. Here we have Robin, and this figure is absolutely awesome. He's kind of got the swept over Elvis hair, and that does make him exclusive to this set because when we'd see Robin again, he wouldn't have this hair piece. The stark yellow cape looks really, really amazing, and of course, that torso detail is unmatched. To this day, this is my favorite Lego Robin for a number of reasons. One, for nostalgia, of course, because I had this set growing up and played with this set so much as a kid, but also, this is literally ripped straight from the Lego Batman video game, which, of course, was one of my favorite favorite video games growing up, so I guess both my reasons for Robin being one of my favorite DC figures is nostalgia, but eh, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and defend it, because I love it. <laughs> And our final minifigure to look at is Alfred, which honestly, in a lot of ways, was a very groundbreaking minifigure and introduced something that LEGO doesn't even do all that often today in 2024. That is a headpiece that has printing continuously all around the head. So, you know, we could see that Alfred is affected like one of three men with a little male, pa male pattern baldness there. But you can see that he's got the black on the back of his head that continues onto the top area that continues onto the front area. If you look at every minifig in your collection, even modern ones, you'll be hard pressed to find minifigs that have full 360 printing like this. So Alfred is in a very exclusive club of minifigs that got great printing detail like that. That being said, the face print is awesome too with the little mustache. And of course his tuxedo looks great and dapper as always. And how can you have a Batcave set without Alfred? I think any Batcave without Alfred is pretty much incomplete, but it's a shame that we've barely gotten Alfred over the years, so it's great that he's here, and I love it. Now, one thing I always liked about this set growing up as a kid is the amount of side builds that this came with. I mean, we got Robin's little jet ski here, we got the bat pod ski thing, I don't know what to call it. I'll decide as this video goes on. <laughs> we also got this little ice block to put a minifigure in for Mr. Freeze and a miniature penguin submarine. So we're gonna look at all of these up close, of course, but I always thought it was so cool how they gave us so much to play with beyond just the Batcave location itself. Perhaps the simplest thing here is Mr. Freeze's block of ice that, of course, is designed to have a minifigure put into it. Something I think is interesting is these are unique pieces, right? So, like, the molding is completely different on each one with the coloring because see how it's, like, thick on the left side here and skinny on the other? So it is pretty cool that you did get two unique pieces. And the idea, of course, was just to put a minifig inside and it looks like Mr. Freeze froze somebody up. Then, of course, the idea is for Batman to be able to break them out and save the day. Then, of course, we've got the Penguin's little Penguin Submarine here, which looks really great and was kind of a precursor to an entire set we would get from the Batman 1 theme just a year or two later. That being said, we do have some U98 stickers on the side. I don't know if that's a reference to the Penguin or not, but we also have some stickers on the side for, like, the portholes. They're obviously not functional. They're just stickers, but... You could open up both sides to reveal the penguin on the inside. You've got a movable periscope, which is cool, as well as some uh, little mechanisms in there for penguin to pilot it. As far as exterior play features go, we do have these little flippers on the side that I guess could be used for steering. We've got some shooters on the front. They don't do anything. They're just for aesthetic. And of course, we've got some feet on the back for direction, as well as a little propeller to keep the penguin submarine moving. 
Here we've got Robin's jet ski, and one thing that always sort of bothered me with this is that Robin literally has to stand up because his feet can't fit underneath the control. I mean, you could fix that very easily by mocking it, but hey, we're trying to review the set on its own merit. That said, we do have a Robin R sticker on the front with a little blaster gun on the front as well. Got some flippers on the side for direction, and overall, it's a very simple build, bordering on like a polybag build, to be honest, but it is very cool, and of course, the Robin color aesthetic never gets old. And finally, we have the Bat Pod Ski Bat... I don't know. I gotta decide on a name before this is over. <laughs> but I really do like the skis they used on the bottom. They're very reminiscent of old Bionicle parts, which is cool. And then, of course, it just kind of glides along there. So up front, we have these two repeater machine guns that are built using binoculars. And then there's like a little Technic pin there that this piece rotates on, which is cool. I always thought it was a little weird that these flaps on the front have the Batman logo facing that way. I feel like they should be facing this way, but whatever. Then we've got these long black pieces on the front that add some aesthetic. The front is really built well, too. It feels like something straight out of a Tim Burton Batman movie. Then, of course, we can lift the cockpit up to see you just kind of lay Batman back. There's a little control section, and overall, it looks really awesome. So moving back to the set itself, it's comprised in several different sections. Up front here, we have the landing pad for, I guess, like the bat jet ski. I don't know what you would call it with the skis on it. It's definitely like an Arctic vehicle, especially going up against Mr. Freeze. Anyways, over here, we've got the transformation chamber as well as a workout area for Bruce Wayne and a cell to keep the villains in. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Then you can move across the walkway here to the front where the bat computer is, take the steps down to the main area that brings you out to the staging table, I suppose. Then you can follow this over to the bat signal, a giant missile, as well as a ladder down to the docks. And presumably it would be all like surrounded by water and everything as we see on the box and instructions. So there's a lot going on here. We're going to take it section by section and let's get into it now. So we'll start off with the main staging area here where you can see we've got this little knob we can twist and when you do it actually turns this entire section so you can see it moves the bat jet ski and the idea being of course you can turn it to have the ski line up perfectly with the ramp here I'm going to speed it up a little bit and then of course it could just fly down the ramp a little something like that it's an absolutely massive build and as you can see this comes out or it Maybe probably isn't supposed to, but it could just be a design flaw from back in the day, or maybe I built something wrong. Who knows? Anyways, this is absolutely massive, and as you can see, the entire thing kind of comes apart and is modular, so if you need to move it or anything, or I suppose if you just wanted to display this part on its own, you could do that. But there's a lot of really cool stuff and how modular it is, so let's take a closer look now. So once we've removed that front section, there's an area here where, of course, you could put your minifigs getting ready to hop on the bat ski. And then there's all kinds of tools back here, like wrenches and crowbars and all that. Then there's the spiral staircase, which is really cool. They used this a lot back in the day for, like, Harry Potter and Castle. But basically, your minifig could, you know, walk up these steps and get all the way to the top. And then they'd be in the computer room, which we'll look at next. All right, if you are looking at this and you don't think in the deep, dark layer of the bat cave from the forest fire videos, ah, you're missing out. Those videos were so good back in the day and I've actually met Forrest a couple times. Really cool guy. Anyways, up top here, we've got these giant stickers for Harvey Dent, for the Joker, and for all of these alarms going off across the city of Gotham. And I always thought that this was so cool. Like when I was playing with this as a kid, it was really, really amazing to have this computer here. And of course, you've got these smaller computers here too that have stickers on them that were perfect for Batman and Robin to be able to hop into the adventure. Speaking of which, you do have two chairs here, one for Batman, one for Robin, presumably. You could just take your minifig and sit them in there, a little something like that. Over to the side, we've got a sword on display. And then of course, Alfred comes in this set as well so we've got a little tray for him here which he can just kind of hold to bring to Batman and Robin as they're working the night away. Then we've got the bat phone here with a little alarm, which you can open up, and then there's weapon storage in there. Inside, we've got all kinds of stuff like batarangs, guns, all kinds of cool stuff, and these were all accessories that pretty much came in all the Lego Batman sets back in the day. Over here, you can see we've got a little canister. It's easier to move the knot <laughs> but we've got a little canister here with one of the joker bomb heads in it on display then of course we've got some cool stuff over here which i'll zoom in to show you all right so moving in you could see that there's a bat sticker on the table there then of course we've got the computers here the screens up top are printed and then of course 
like the sticker for the command module and all that is stickers identical on both sides. I really like the little dinosaur and gemstone we have here, but as we zoom in, you can see that we've got the Joker's fingerprints on there, which is kind of interesting because we see what the Joker's signature looks like in LEGO canon, as well as the fact that apparently minifigures have fingerprints. Hmm, things that make you wonder. <laughs> So then you can see that we've got a walkway that comes over. There's a little bat hanging underneath. Of course, it's designed so the minifigures can walk from section to section. Now over here, we do have a little weightlifting area where, of course, you could take the dumbbell off and have your minifigures lifting weights. Although the funny thing is, the only Bruce Wayne we get in this set, of course, has a dark blue suit on. I don't know many people that lift weights in suits. And I can't picture him suiting up entirely as Batman to lift weights either, so that's kind of funny. Anyways, you can see that there's a little trap door here, uh, as you can see, and we'll show you how you pull that out in a second. Basically, you just swivel it around back and you pull this knob out, and that trap door lets out into the prison cell down below, which we'll look at closer in just a moment. What I really want to focus on right now is the transformation chamber, which is up top. Never really understood this as a kid because you could see through both sides, but I guess the idea is you put the Batman suit in one side and the Bruce Wayne suit in the other. It's always a little tricky to get this open though. You definitely gotta have some kind of a fingernail to be able to open that up. But I guess the idea is, right, you put Bruce Wayne in one side and Batman in the other, and then he transforms and he's in his suit. Kind of interesting, but eh, it's just all right. So now we're gonna move down and we'll take a look at the prison cell down below. So you can lift this entire bar off and then you can swing this up and you're able to access the inside where the villains can be. And of course, there's a big like funnel or tube or tunnel. I don't know what word you would use for it. Guess it depends where you're at in the world, but there's an escape hatch for the villains. I guess Batman's architect wasn't thinking too brightly on that, but I do really, really like these little uh, torches here. I think that works really well. And I think it's pretty ingenious too, how it's not technically an illegal building technique, but you take this big long plate and these studs fit perfectly into these little L bracket pieces. So it's not technically like a regular Lego connection, but the math checks out and I think it looks really, really good. That brings us over to the left side where we've got this entire twistable shooting mechanism where we've got all kinds of weapons. Well, first off, there's an area where you could actually seat a minifigure in there. We'll use Batman as our guinea pig. So you could seat a minifigure in here to be like piloting this. Then we have a net that can be cast, presumably to catch the villains. You just push this tab in and the net sprawls out like that, so that's pretty cool. And then we also have a giant missile here, which you push this piece back, and the missile shoots out a little something like that. You can also twist this here, and the gear will move so that you can aim and position it however you wish. Definitely a very cool mid-2000s feature, just feels right. We also have a walkway, just like before, with a bat hanging down, so I like that both sides are connected kind of the same way. Then you can move down and there's a ladder here that comes down to a pier. And like I said, based off the box art and everything, this would be like surrounded by water in a cave. So it makes sense that there's a little pier for Robin's little boat that we talked about earlier to be able to pull up and refuel or let Robin get in and out or whatever the case may be. But basically, that's it as far as the set is concerned. So let's wrap this up and we'll call it a day. All right, guys, let me know what you think of this set. I grew up with this as a kid, as I mentioned. And of course, this set will always hold a special place in my heart because of that. But I still think it's a great set, even removing the nostalgia aside, because there's so many play features. It was really innovative for its time. And of course, all the minifigs that come in this set are tough to argue with. So let me know your guys' thoughts. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.